Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I will be showing you an easier way to edit your ebooks without having to re export them again from Adobe InDesign or whatever other software it is that you are making your ebooks in. So, here is an ebook that I recently made. This is a print book, and then we converted it into an ebook form using Adobe InDesign. InDesign does a decent job of exporting the book into a coded format, which can be read on Kindle devices or other tablets, um, so that the book can be read in an ebook form. However, there are some limitations to what InDesign can do in terms of coding. I'll give you a few examples. If we look at this page, one complaint that we had was that there wasn't enough padding around these color blocks. I couldn't figure out a way to force InDesign to create padding around them so that the text wasn't so tight with the highlight. Another complaint we had was sometimes these think it through moments end up just hanging at the bottom of a page. We want to drop these to the next page. We want to put a page break in here. This can be achieved in InDesign fairly easily, but if I can do it while I'm editing the rest of the EPUB in a coded format, why not? Next step, how do we edit the code in an EPUB? The best way I find is to use a program called Sigil. I'll show you how to find it. Let's go open up Google. In your search engine, simply look up Sigil eBook. And you'll go to this first search result here. Here is Sigil's website. We want to use the EPUB editor that Sigil provides. We're going to click on that. And we're going to go over here to this tab on the side called Download. We want the latest Windows 64 download because that's the computer I have. You may have a Mac, in which case you'll want to use this Mac download. I'm going to click the Windows download. I already have Sigil installed on my machine, so I'm not going to worry about reinstalling it. But let's go ahead and open up our EPUB in Sigil. When you first open up a file in Sigil, oftentimes you will get this warning. This is simply warning you that the HTML is not necessarily very well formed. I always get this warning when I open up an ebook that has been created in InDesign. I suppose InDesign does a messy job of creating code. So yes, I'm going to allow Sigil to fix the messy code. If you're familiar with the website and the way it is formed, an ebook is exactly the same way. If we look at the tabs on the side, we can see there is text, styles, images, and other items organized in folders. If you're not familiar with code, don't panic. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. If we open up the text tab on the side, these are all of our files. They are fronted with OEBPS, which is part of the table of contents structure. If we go over each of these, we can see that we have chapter one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Let's start with something easy. If we look at the table of contents on the side, let's say that my client no longer wanted a regular dash, they wanted an M dash in between the chapters. I'll show you how to fix that quickly. The file we're looking for is this one, the table of contents HTML file. I'm going to click on that to open it. The table of contents is simply comprised of a list, which is shown by the li tags here. We have the front matter, the preface and book structure, uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on and so forth. Here are those offending dashes that my client no longer wanted. So let's say I'm going to swap those out for an M dash. I'm going to backspace and then use Alt 0150 to place a, that's an M dash actually, Alt 0151 is an M dash. Now I'm going to copy that dash 
and I can proceed to place that dash where it is wanted. Because of the way InDesign exported out the file names, I also lost a little bit of structure. For example, what's your dream goal is missing an apostrophe, so I can go ahead and add that back in here. Okay, now that I am done changing the names of the chapters, which are indicated by the white text inside of the list items, let's go ahead and save this file. I'm going to go up to this little floppy disk icon and click Save. Now we can go back to our file folder and I'm going to open up this ebook that I have created. When we look at the navigation on the side, we can see that we have the M dashes, and we can see that the apostrophe that I added in here is now working. Now that we have that sorted out, let's figure out what to do with the padding on this style. So let's go back to Sigil. When I want to change the style, we will go to the Styles tab, and then the first style we want to look for is typically going to be on the zero style sheet. This contains styles for the entire book. Now, what are we looking for? As I click through here, we can see there are tons and tons of paragraph styles. Fortunately, I am familiar with the styles that I had in my InDesign book, and I know what I named that paragraph style. But let's say that we don't know what it is. If you're looking for a particular style, Navigate to the text tab and then open up a chapter that contains the style that you're looking for. If we look back to our ebook for reference, I know that chapter two has some of these styles in it. So let's go open up the file for chapter two in Sigil. I'm going to click on the chapter two file here, and now we can scroll down until we find that content. If you're overwhelmed, go ahead and just use the content you know that you're looking for. Now that I am in my chapter two file, let's go ahead and look for a particular term that I know is included in that shaded paragraph style. This is the term we are looking for, game style. And you do want to make sure that you change the settings here to the current or all HTML files. By default, it is set to in CX files, but we need to look for the current file. I'm going to search for this term and it now has identified it for me. Looking at this line, I can see that the class is shaded H3. So this is a paragraph class and the subclass is shaded H3. So this is what we are looking for in the CSS styles. If I go back to my styles tab, now I can scroll down until I find shaded H3. Here it is. Even if you are unfamiliar with CSS, don't worry, it's not too difficult to understand. It's fairly intuitive. Obviously, the color is located here. We could change this, we could type black or red or whatever we wanted in here, and it would proceed to change things. This is the background color. This is the shaded portion. Now it looks like InDesign has attempted to apply a margin, but we are not interested in margin. We are interested in padding. So let's go ahead and apply a padding. I'm going to type padding, colon, and let's add a padding of say 20 pixels. If we do it in this fashion, it will apply a padding to all sides. Let's save it and reopen it. Let's scroll down to chapter two. And there now we can see that there is a padding applied to this paragraph style. 
I think that may be a little bit too much. And I also want to indent this text more into the style. So let's go back and make, make a few more changes. So instead of adding padding to all sides at once, let's do it by individual side. I want to change the padding top to 15 pixels. And the padding bottom to 15 pixels. The padding left to 20 pixels. And then I'm not going to worry about the right hand padding as for now. And I wanted to indent that text a little further from the left hand side. So I'm going to create a margin left of 10 pixels. Now let's save our file and reopen it again. When I navigate to chapter two and scroll down, we can see that a little bit of margin has been added to the side and that the padding has been reduced from 20 pixels to 15 pixels. That might still be a little much for a real ebook, but for now I'm going to leave it. You know how to change it. The last thing I want to show you is how to add a manual page break. The client wanted these think it through items to end up on their own page. This is at the end of chapter two. So let's go back to our chapter two file in Sigil. This file is still open in this tab. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to navigate to the bottom. Let's find that line that says, let's think it through. It should be in white text. It can be a bit overwhelming to find these things yourself, so do remember that you can type in this box and it will help you find it. It does appear to be case sensitive, so you may need to add capitals if you can't find it. Perhaps it's all caps. Ah. The reason it was not finding it is because this is a curly apostrophe and not a straight apostrophe. That is sensitive to certain characters like that. So remember that when looking for items using search. Now that I have found it, I can look to see that this is a paragraph class on its own. I'm going to drop it down to the next line. This is the code that adds a manual page break. I'll paste it in. I'll put this in the description below, but this is the best way to add a paragraph style without adding a whole lot of extra styling. All the styling and the break is contained in the singular line. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. It starts off with a paragraph style, of page break before, and that equals always. The next thing is I don't want this to create a visual discrepancy, so I add an opacity of zero, and then the paragraph ends. So let's go ahead and save this and see how it works. We're going to open up our file again. And let's go to the chapter two, think it through. Here we are. Now we can see that chapter two has a break and let's think it through, drops to the next page. Here are two variations on this code. In this line, I'm telling this paragraph to insert a page break after and to always do so. I'm also telling this paragraph to be invisible 
at opacity zero. In this version, the only difference is that the page break is before the item. In this one, it is after. In this one, it is before. Other than that, these two lines of code are exactly the same. Alrighty, that is all I have to show you guys today. Um, so thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, or if this is your first, third, or even fourth video, go ahead and like and subscribe below. It really helps us out. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and we're almost there. Give us just a little more. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope this helped and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.